Okay, so in our house, all of us have things, I guess, like couches, TVs, food, pencils, paper, whatever. And some things go used, they're used quite often, some things are used always, and some things are used almost never. According to a guy named Scott, if you keep a thing for seven years, you are sure to find a use for it. So my interpretation of this quote is, um, uh, you never know what you have, you know, you always have a use for it, so keep whatever you have, don't throw things away just like that. So, I was like, I thought to myself, you know, I agree with this quote, but I also disagree with it. So I'll highlight some points about uh, my views on this, uh, this quote. You know, some things, if you have something for seven years, and you haven't used it, you don't need it anymore. You can throw it away. You know, I'm sure everyone's seen those shows on like TLC or the Home Network, like Clean House, where people have things from like two decades ago, there's a couch and it means something to them. And then they also have like something like, you know, just pointless things that mean something to them, but they don't, have, they don't use them. It's just lying around somewhere in their house, in their garage or their attic. I mean, if it's in your attic, it means nothing to you. You know, you have to have it like, in your living room or something, where it means something to you. And um, another thing, maybe he could be implying in this quote, you know, cherish the things that you have, you know, if you have like, if you have a swing in your backyard, don't just look at it all the time, you know, go on the swing, you know, play with it, you know, enjoy the fresh air. Or if you have a fountain, I know people that have fountains in their house. And they don't take the time to just sit there and look at the, and listen to the water dripping down and enjoying it. So, you know, I think people need to cherish what they have, even if it's just little, little things. Or, um, let's say a video game, you know, play it, not all the time, but play it often. Don't just, like for me, I, I have a video game. And it's, it's been lying there for years and it's never been played. Played once and then that's it. Um, so, And also just, uh, so basically I think from this quote, I agree with it in the, in the form of like, you should uh, cherish what you have. I mean, there's always a use for something, but you have to use it. And I disagree with this quote in that there's some things that don't have meaning anymore. It's, there's things in your house which have no, no value to you and you should, uh, it's time to let it go. So if you keep a thing for seven years you, and you, you are sure to find a use for it, I think it's uh, how you look at the quote.
I thought the opening was a little bit odd, but you eventually got to the point, and there was a pretty good interpretation of what the quote was. Your thesis makes you sound a little wishy-washy, though. You know, <laughs> sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. And uh, mostly, it sounded like you said it's not. And I think that that's really what you wanted to focus on—that we're holding on to stuff too long, and we ought to get rid of stuff. So ultimately, the supporting position that you, all the supporting material that you have, goes in one particular direction. It doesn't go in the other direction that you seem to suggest. You're also going to be talking about. Um, I think uh, you do pretty well talking to the audience. I think you could engage a little bit more, but uh, your eye contact is not problematic. Um, your voice, uh, you also project pretty well. I think you could use a little bit more dynamic inflection in your voice. It's not that you're not speaking in a monotone per se, but uh, the energy level just seems a little too consistent. Uh, you know, sometimes you want to emphasize it. Like when you're talking about there's that swing in your backyard. Well, you should play with it a little bit. You know, go out there and get on it and enjoy it. Don't just sit there and look at it. You know, have a, have have a little bit of dynamic range that you're using when you're talking about things, and I think it'll make the speech a little bit more lively. What you did was fine. Just uh, I think you can get more into it, and uh, you'll feel like you have a little bit more connection with the audience when you do that. There's some good indicators and gestures where you're talking, although you do tend to hold on to those topics. And I didn't count it. You can count it when you watch it. How many times you look down at the topic to see what the next idea is. Is. It's not going to appear there, but you keep looking down at it. Let's, we talked about that before. There's a good example of that refrigerator disease. Is there something new in there since the last time I looked? Nope. All right, let, you know, let me look again. Nope. <laughs> let me look again. You've got the ideas in your head. That's where you want to be, and you want to be in your head and with the audience, and you, you, know, you keep that topic in your hand, and it becomes a distraction to you. All right, thank you.